Atha Energy is an explorer and developer of Canadian uranium projects with a very large portfolio of uranium assets, including resources, targets, prospective lands, and carried interests. On Monday, the company announced a new discovery at its Rib East target with Athabasca-style high-grade mineralization. CEO Troy Boisjoli is here to discuss the results. I'm Martin Gagel with Market Radius Research. Please remember this is neither recommendation nor investment advice. We're here to learn about the company. Troy, welcome back and congrats on the new discovery. Yeah, thanks, Martin. Uh, it's exciting and uh, thanks for having us back. All right. Why don't you just give us a quick overview on the results you posted on uh, Monday, and then we can talk a bit more about what that means. Yeah, re results from Monday. Um, three holes uh, in the rib uh, target area, discovery target area. Um, all three were mineralized. Uh, we stepped into that target area. We drilled three holes. Over and sorry, to interrupt. These are your first three holes there, right? It's not like... That's right. Uh, yeah. First three holes in a maiden target. Um, and, uh, you know, that that's a very good point because in uranium exploration, uh, to intersect mineralization in your first holes in a new area um, is extremely uncommon. Um, and for us, that speaks to the potential metal endowment that we're seeing in the, in the area and in the space. Uh, but three holes, uh, widely spaced drilling. Um, each hole was 200 meters apart. Uh, so 400 meters of strike length, mineralization over 400 meters of strike length in the first three holes. Um, importantly, what we saw um, in, in this new area um, along the rib uh, nine iron trend, which is a 31 kilometer long trend, uh, cutting across a basin that's analogous to the Athabasca basin, is that we saw Athabasca analog structure alteration and mineralization um, in, in these three holes, which has us really excited, particularly uh, because we've only tested 400 meters of a multi-kilometer long trend um, that is defined by electro or EM, uh, call it geophysics, both electromagnetics, uh, conductivity, and uh, and gravity. So lots more space to go. Um, initial results have us very very encouraged. And uh, Martin, I'll remind you this is our. Uh, this is our second release of this summer's program. The first release um, had us uh, reporting uh, new mineralization discovered in the first drill hole from the KU area. And so this is a second release where we moved a drill into the rib area, uh, another discovery. So um, I'm very excited uh, and very proud of our team uh, for the work that they've done uh, to de-risk these targets, um, applying very good geoscience um, and having the results to show for it. This is a whole new region. You're giving it a, a analogous to the Athabasca, which is obviously um, like world class uh, in many mm -hmm. respects in size and in grade uh, that that's there. What what does it say about your your exploration team that you're able to a pick out this uh, project, and then on your first bunch of holes, you, you hit discoveries right off the, the bat here. You seem to have a good grasp uh, on an underexplored area that you actually know what's going on there. Yeah, um, may maybe maybe first off on the, on the team side of it, um, we're, we're fortunate, Martin, we're, we're a Saskatoon-based group. Um, those who know the uranium space understand Saskatchewan um, is uh, is the home for uranium in Canada um, to date. Um, and as a function of that, we've got a group of people that have been exploring, developing and operating tier one uranium projects in the uranium space for decades. Uh, you know, I, I came up through Cameco and NextGen, our vice president of exploration, um, Arano Cameco SRK as a principal geologist there. Uh, he was a chief geologist that uh, was there when Cigar Lake came into production. Uh, so, so we know, we know the space well, we've been doing it for a long time, but you know, to your to your earlier point, we identified um, the uh, Angulac project, the Angulac project area, as a key acquisition target, and we acquired it through the acquisition of Latitude. Um, and the reason that we acquired it is one, it has a historic resource base of forty three million pounds um, at 0.69 percent, making it one of the highest grade deposits outside of the Athabasca Basin. Um, that's in if you can see my cursor. That is contained within this little box right here. Uh, but it sits, you know, to draw an, an analogy back to the Athabasca Basin, um, this deposit sits just outside 
of this line right here. And what this line is, is that's the edge of the uh, Anjikuni Basin. And the Anjikuni Basin is a sub-basin uh, with similar characteristics to the Athabasca. The only difference, and, and one of the main differences is um, it was, it, it hasn't been explored. It was highly underexplored. So we acquired this project just over a year ago through the acquisition of Latitude, through the closing of that deal. We set to work with an exploration program where last year we expanded the LAC-50 deposit. Um, we drilled 25 holes, 10,000 meters within the LAC-50 deposit area within this black box right here. Um, every one of them was mineralized. 25 holes stepped out materially from mineralization, went 25 for 25, 100% hit rate on those holes. In parallel to that, we also built up our exploration model. We spilt, we spent a year uh, defining these targets, building up these targets, de-risking these targets, and, and have now, over the course of the last four to five weeks, had the opportunity to drill them. And you know, our targets, our, our target methodology is holding together very well, um, having not just one, but two, um, you know, discoveries of mineralization within these target areas at the very early stages of, the, of this program. Um, it speaks to two things, you know, one, our targeting methodology is working, um, and two, the potential mineral endowment that we see here. Um, you know, uh, despite what, you know, some geologists might tell you, it doesn't matter how good your work is. Um, if the if the mineral isn't in the ground or the metal isn't in the ground, you don't have success. Uh, and so we're seeing a combination of those two factors where we've done good work to get to where we're at, uh, but we're also operating um, a project that in our view has substantial upside potential uh, based off of the data that we have in hand right now. What are the next steps for this summer's drill program? You've got another undrilled target. Are you going after that as well? Or are you going to follow up here on Rib East? Uh, and as well, you had your other uh, discovery a, a month ago. So yeah. uh, wh what are, like, you've got a lot of land, a lot of pr highly prospective land. How do you manage the, the scale and, hit, and, and set up your priorities? Well, hey, we've got we've got a project here that has a foundation around the Lock 50 region. Um, last year, we stepped out and de-risked the scale potential around Lock 50, um, and that area in and of itself, um, we we believe has substantial growth potential. It's you know the extensional corridors there may be about thirty percent tested, and then you know you mentioned multiple targets. Um, yeah, we've got a thirty-one kilometer long trend. Uh, cutting across this basin uh, where we've targeted two areas and both of those areas are mineralized. Um, based off of the success um, early on of this program of identifying mineralization in both the rib area and the KU area, expect us to continue to follow up on that mineralization and those results throughout the duration of this program. And uh, keep in mind that um, we've released results from five holes, uh, the first five holes from a 10,000 meter program. So more results to come, more drilling to come, uh, following up, building upon uh, early success uh, and new discoveries along this 31 kilometer long rib nine iron trend. Sure. And just to repeat, that's a 10,000 meter program you're you're putting together or you're, you're yeah, doing? that's what. Yeah, exactly. That That's the plan. That's what's planned. We have two drills going. Um, yeah. So we're, we're drilling in the rib area and we're drilling in the KU area. Uh, All right. Expect us to continue to follow up um, on results. You know, we're we're into a system. We're into a system in two different areas, um, which you know is uh, is exciting. And so we have one drill focused in KU, one drill focused in RIP. These were sh relatively shallow holes you drilled, just two hundred and fifty meters. Like, do the math, and that's a lot of holes if you're going to keep at that same depth. How uh, how many holes are you expecting to do? And, and obviously, you're you're iterating as, as you get more data. You're you're changing where your targets are. To as each drill hole gives you more information and, and better knowledge to to make the next hole with. Uh, how many holes are you planning on doing, and how frequently should we be expecting uh, more results to come out? Yeah, the the number of holes um, we'll, we'll be targeting a number of meters. Um, Martin, but you know, last year with 10,000 meters, we drilled about 25 drill holes. 
Um, okay. You know, so expect relatively around the same. Um, the reason I don't give a definitive answer to that is we plan every hole off the previous result. Um, yeah. And, and uh, we vector in um, on the next target based off the previous uh, previous drill uh, results from that hole. And so the depths can vary. But to your point, we're seeing in the rib area, we're seeing shallow mineralization, two important factors here. Um, we're seeing mineralization within the basin sediments themselves. So there's fault zones that come through the basin. Uh, and we're seeing mineralization within the sediments within the basin itself. And then we're also with rib three with the third hole in the in that area we're seeing high grade mineralization localized within a highly graphitic fault zone in the basement rocks as well so we're seeing basement hosted and sandstone hosted mineralization along a 400 meter uh trend uh to date um expect us to continue to follow up on strike of that up and down dip um there, there there's a lot of work to do um very good start with the first few holes into mineralization though and let's just stepping back from a more per, uh, macro perspective here uh since we last talked uh, a little over a month ago how is any changes or uh, there, there's just more and more uranium nuclear uh headlines in the news uh how is the macro environment shaping up over this last little while it continues to strengthen materially. It, it seems like every day or every second day, um, there is more demand that is layering on, um, whether that's uh, large scale civil demand. You know, this morning, uh, Japan announced indications that not only are they restarting reactors, but they're also planning to build additional reactors. Um, which is a complete reversal. Uh, you know, you look at the uh, small modular reactor space as it relates to the build out of data centers uh, across uh, the US domestically in line with administration's executive orders. Uh, bottom line, Martin, is that this is a uranium market um, like we haven't seen before. Uh, the demand is being um, layered on in a way that, you know, hasn't been seen maybe maybe in the mid-60s through early 70s when you had the U.S. building, uh, you know, over 100 nuclear reactors. Um, that that time period might have, may have been similar, but, you know, we, we haven't seen anything like this in modern history. And then you compound that with the fact that we're, we have a structural supply deficit even based off current demand projections. Um, we think that this is going to be a very strong uh, sector uh, for not months or years, but you know, going on decades. All right, Troy, thanks for giving us uh, the update. Congratulations on the, the great results and I uh, hope to talk to you again soon. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate you having me on.